Hi, it's me. It's 2.30am and I have been kicked out of a hostel. I'm not joking. This sounds bad, doesn't it? Like I'm a heroin addict or a druggie or some loser like that. Well, I am not. I can tell you what happened was they heard me talking to the mental health team, the truth I was telling them about what, how horrible they'd been. And they heard me. And she, this battle axe from hell has kicked me out. It's so funny, really. I'm relieved, to be honest. Because they've got to put me somewhere else. So let's see where they put me now. It was absolutely wanky. I talk about mingly. But that was besides the point. When you come to the hotel, it's like entering a prison or something. First of all, you would not believe what I'd been put through. Um, so I get out of the taxi. And the taxi leaves your bags on the floor on my Zimmer frame, you know. And they're meant to help you. Well, they don't. We're not allowed to touch your things because of COVID-19 and all this, right? So I have severe arthritis. I have to bag it myself. Terrified. Then she gives me a stick. You have to do a COVID test. It's a bit late for that now in the day, isn't it? Uh, wake up. Should have done that a year ago. Anyway, you do that. The stick and I didn't have it, so they let me in. You've got to wear a mask before you come in here. Then they ask you if you what prison you've been in. I said, I haven't. What drugs you take? I said, paracetamol. Why? Um, are you an alcoholic? No, I'm teetotal. All these awful questions. And they've been absolutely abusive and horrific to me. And they're like big, burly women, like prison guards. It's horrible. Anyway, they said, we do checks on your room. And they just let themselves in, knock the door, we're coming in. Like that, apparently. So you could be completely naked on the bed or whatever. And they just barricade in on you to check for drugs, I suppose, or whatever. God, I couldn't have stood another night. I was going to sleep out tonight. I couldn't cope. Well, what I was planning on doing was getting a few hours kip and then coming out early in the morning anyway because I couldn't cope with the atmosphere and the hatred. Plus, the place is absolutely minging. It's rank. And I couldn't use the bathroom. It's disgusting. So I have pissed in a hedge and I have taken diocalm to stop my stomach from going. So you've got to laugh, haven't you? Anyway, that's the answer. I'm out of here. It's good. Because I was crying hysterically all day. I've been really ill since I've come here. So I'm out of here. And I thought I'd get way we go. So let's see what the, where these bloody bastards put me now. Because by law they have to. Or I ring the ambulance at 111, they said. And they're going to help. They're lovely on 111, I must say. Absolutely lovely. This place, though, is rank. Well, it was known as the rape centre, wasn't it? A year or so ago, full of heroin addicts and... People like that. It's not suitable for a vulnerable person like me. Everybody said that. I can remember they offered this about a month or so ago when I was on the streets in Chester. And they only offered this and I wouldn't take it then. I only came because I was exhausted after a few nights on the street. And there was a woman from the church and she said, Oh, you can't put her in there with all those heroin addict men and things. It's not safe. But that's all they do because they've been horrendous to me. Well, here they've been absolutely horrific. It's like Gestapo. Worse than that. It's like prison. You feel like you're in a prison. They treat you like a criminal. You come in. You treat you like a criminal. They know damn well I'm not a heroin addict or on drugs. Do I look like it? You know what I mean. And um, it's just outrageous. Anyway, uh, I'm just glad I'm coming out of here. I didn't feel safe at all. They come in when you're out. They could take your stuff and snoop through your things. Goodness knows they've probably been in my room today. I wouldn't know. Luckily, I sealed this bag off um, with my bedding in it. I've tied the knot in that, so I'd know if that would have been cut, I would have known. So that's safe, because I never got it out. But um, absolutely horrific they've been. And it's been absolute... Um, oh, it's disgusting. The way I was greeted, pick you up. We're not allowed to touch anything. You have to do it yourself. Like not this brilliant woman. Oh, they were horrible. There's a group of them. They're all chain smoking. And this man, when I was crying down the road, who walking his dog, he said, oh, God, he said, the stuff in there all on bloody weed. He said, it's terrible, that place. I said, I know. He said, you poor love. He said, can't you get them to put you somewhere else? And I said, no, I don't know. I've had enough of them suicidal. I've been hysterically crying. They've shown no support, not one ounce of sympathy. They're just laughing in my face. This is how sick these people are. They're horrendous. I mean, to be fair, when I was in rooms the whole six months, they were very nice. It only happened at the end, all that business, when that lovely woman left, the manager. But the hotel was absolutely lovely in there. But that was done by the council because you have a fridge and a microwave. And I was just thinking that. I mean, I'm going in like that to a hotel. Can you imagine checking into a Premier Inn now? And I'm telling you, you've got to have a COVID test. We don't help you with your budget. Do it yourself. How are you? What drugs are you on? What prison have you been to? Imagine that if you're entering a Premier Inn. You would not go, would you? Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. We'll see now if anything happens, and I'll keep you updated. But you probably won't get this for a day or two. It's when I charge you McDonald's, because I bet you they leave me back on the streets. Anyway, I'm glad I'm out of there.
I feel safer outside. And I'll see you later. Over and out.